Welcome to your awakening journey. Today's destinations include higher consciousness and actualized potential. If all ascenders could now please be seated in a comfortable meditative posture, we are about to ascend. You are now arriving at your host, Brian Henry. What is up, Ascenders? Welcome back to another episode of Awaken. We are streaming this one live as well. This is episode 16. Um, and yeah, we are, we're live. So if you're with us live, I want to welcome you. And for those of you that are catching the replay, thank you for tuning in. Uh, yeah, as mentioned in the last episode there, we are going to start streaming these uh, these conversations live for you guys so you can jump in and be involved if that's something that you'd like to do. Um, if you do wish to join us live, you can find us at the Ascenders Facebook group and that you can find over at togetherweascend.com forward slash community. And for those of you that might be with us live, if you want to check out the replays to any of the previous episodes, you can find those over at togetherweascend.com forward slash awaken. Today, Ascenders, I bring you a galactic tour guide. You might remember her from a previous episode. I did have uh, Tara on for episode 13. Um, if you had listened to that episode, if you've seen Tara's content before, you would uh, you definitely notice a lot of resonance between what we talk about in the Ascenders community and what she's got going on. And I definitely feel that sense of resonance with her and the message that he, she's bringing. Um, I think she's here for the same reason that many of us are, and that's to, to serve humanity in this process of collective ascension and to just lift the vibration of our planet and of humanity at, um, as well. And... Um, you know, she's uh, she's taking a amazing role on here to to lead the leaders. I think that's the the way that I've come to think of it. Um, not only is she doing her part in lifting the vibration herself, but she's also leading leading others by supporting them and getting them to step into their purpose and their calling. So well, I'm not going to keep you guys waiting any longer. Tara, you are on. What is up, girl? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> and I am excited to have you. If it's anything like the uh, the last conversation we had, um, it's yes. definitely going to be a good time. Yeah, So I'm ready. What do you got going on these days? <laughs> Woohoo! What do I have going on these days? Um, well, you know what? Most recently, like this last week, so much inward, so much stillness. So much quiet. It was really beautiful um, because you know how we, like in the spiritual community and on our journey, we can tend to still be in our heads so much and be in the mind, even when we don't really think we are. And so there was a day, I think like last week, Monday, I just got the message to just stop everything. And I was like, okay, these, you know, these other things that I wanted to work on. It was like, nope. Guidance was like, nope. You're not doing anything today, but like meditating and sleeping. And, not do and it was so beautiful. And just to stop everything. And we just don't do this enough. Nobody does this enough, right? Connecting to the truth, the only truth there is, which is you are God. And feeling embodying that not just knowing it in your mind like, like yeah yeah i'm god yeah you know but like that embodiment and the only way that i found to do that is to take those moments even whether it's a whole day and sometimes i know that's not totally possible for everybody but two to five seconds you know throughout your day over and over again just relax the mind just drop in find what remains mm -hmm. you know <laughs> One thing that I think you might be able to relate to that I often find myself getting caught up in is um, because we have this this knowing to us um, and we've felt that place of, of stillness and we've been in a state of allowance before and we know what it's like to, to be in there and how, how joyful and peaceful it is. I personally have this ongoing voice in my head that 
it's not necessarily a voice, but it's this background sort of assessment of mm -hmm. where I'm at 24 seven. Now that can be mm -hmm. a good thing, of course, right? Being able to, you know, maintain awareness of where am I mm -hmm. at? That's important because if you ever slip into something that might be lower vibratory, you're going to catch that. But one thing that I've noticed in myself is that that actually in some ways doesn't serve me because it takes me away from that place of stillness because I'm always questioning, am mm. I, am I there? Am I, am, do I feel in the way that I should feel? Right. And it's mm. not, it's not this loud voice that I'm hearing 24 seven, but it's this, because I want to be in that state. It's, it's, almost as though it's a desire to to be in that state mm -hmm. that striving to be there can can be the very thing that keeps me from just being, being, being in that stillness <laughs> can you relate to that at all oh yeah i mean anytime we're striving or trying we are not in truth we're not remembering right because striving and trying feels not good there's some, even if it's just a little bit, there's some discord. There's just a tiny little bit of, oh, I'm, I'm striving and trying because I think I'm not there. And so that emotional guidance system will let us know, oh yeah, you're trying so hard. And all you have to do is just remember that you already are. And that's why I, something that's been up for me too lately is I've been doing so much calling work with people and this calling work when when people uncover this phrase that is their unique you know essence that is the state of being they can then return to again and again so you don't have to think oh am i in it you just go oh do i feel this way right now no okay what would bring me back into alignment with that and so that's why the calling work has been so powerful for myself and my clients and others so you boil it down to a phrase yeah. Yeah, so the calling work, it comes from uh, one of my mentors, Anurag Gupta, and he, cre he created this calling work based on just kind of going deeper and deeper and deeper. He worked with uh, large businesses and corporations. He still does for a long time, and I'm actually going to be doing that too. But anyway, that's, I'll tell you about that next. But um, the, so the calling is he basically downloaded it for, you know, for lack of um, a better words, you guys know what I mean, this, this kind of process or this phrase and these questions to ask to evoke someone's calling out of them, which it's, it's just who you are. But this phrase helped, it's like a pointer back to that frequency that you are already. Mm -hmm. And it just brings you back again and again. And you can filter your entire life through this calling. Is it in alignment with this thing? So I'll just give you an example. My calling is people experiencing their infinite nature. So you see how that's not something I do, right? It's not a job. It's not, oh, I'm a spiritual coach or a spiritual teacher or a business alignment coach. It's not. It's anything that I do, anything and everything that I do, my intention is that it creates the experience of someone remembering their infinite nature. Mm -hmm. That lights me up more than anything else in the world. If the whole world suddenly remembered they were infinite, oh my God, I would just implode and like turn into <laughs> light again and I wouldn't even be here. You know, it would just be like, okay, my job is done. See you later, you know? I'm so, out. <laughs> peace. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. So, and, but you can also, um, because you are a person, you are, well, not really you're a person, but anyway, you're a being here, right? So people is also me. So am I experiencing my infinite nature right now? And everything I do gets filtered through that. Everything in my life. So we do, we go through this process of like, what's inconsistent Where You know, there's, there's a lot to it, but um, it's simple. Like the concept is simple, but living it for people is not so simple when they start, mm -hmm. you know, because it takes effort to okay. clean out your closet. So is it usually a, a question that, that comes up as that, that calling phrase? Um, like a question. You so you said yours is, are people um, remembering their infinite nature? Yeah, experiencing their infinite nature. Yes. Okay. So is it that it's a question you can come back to to, to check in? Um. Well, no, the calling is that my calling is people experiencing their infinite. Nature. Okay. That's I understand. The calling. 
-huh. There are questions that get you to what your calling is, that get you to that point. Do you know some of the questions? Oh, yeah. I, this is, yeah, this is the work I've been doing. Right. So you're it's getting special. people to that, to that. Exactly. Let me hear some yes. of the questions. I'm, I'm curious. Okay. So just, I mean, and, and this is like, when I work with people like this, you know, we can, it can take 30 minutes, it can take two hours, whatever. So, you know, if you're doing this at home, you know, on your own, just know that your mind will, will try to get in the way a lot of it. Right. Which is why we kind of uncover stuff. But like one of the questions is, um, if you were to say, see someone next to you, like in a restaurant, like they're, you're at a restaurant, there's a table of people next to you and someone were experiencing, having a certain experience of something, what would you most, 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 most in the whole world above anything else in the world want that person to be experiencing that would light you up and bring you alive in an instant and excited in an instant? I like that. So what that's doing there that I really enjoy is that you're uh, you're reflecting mm -hmm. on what do you want to see in people that you don't even know? Yeah, ah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I mean, it, you can do yeah. it with people you love too, right? Uh -huh. But but see, I think that can actually distort the... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. because if you want something badly for someone that yeah. you don't even know, now that mm -hmm. definitely is saying something, right? We all yeah. want, I'm sure, a plethora of amazing things for, for people that we do know and that we do care about. But if you care about something enough and something is so important to you that you would take joy in in seeing that a yeah. stranger is experiencing that now that that's powerful i like that uh give me another one i want to hear another one <laughs> yeah well and just to comment again on that yeah it's, it's so that shows you that reflects to you that's who you are like you don't care who's experiencing that like it's just your nature that you want them to experience this it doesn't matter and you're right there's no bias there because you don't know this person but you also know that they are you so of course you want them to, you know, have this experience as much as you want yourself to. Mm -hmm. um, so while well, a question for people who have children is if you were like, say, okay, your child is there and you have like, you're leaving the planet, right? You don't have any more time with your child, but you want them to have one, exp like there's this one experience you want them to have in their entire life more than anything else. You know, and a lot of people that evokes because, you know, people and their kids or there's a lot of love there and they just they think it's like it's like if you were properly thinking about yourself as a child and that that m amount of self-love, you know, that's what you're that's what you would say about your child. I want them to experience this more mm -hmm. than anything else. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. noticing a, uh, a pattern between the uh, the couple questions that you brought forth and it's that we uh it, it will it'll serve us to think in terms of the experience that we wish others to experience yeah, yeah. right and i think that's yeah. that's so powerful it's uh it's yeah. really an incredible thing to think about um i think that again those those questions in themselves can can really point someone in the direction of what will light them up if mm -hmm. we're talking about the experience you wish to see in others um then that's such a great way to to uncover what sort of impact that you you want to have on people right um, yeah I think a lot of people they start to think about that they start to think about what um, how do I want to help people one of the ones that mm -hmm. I actually don't like personally um, and I actually steer people away from this is um, what does this world need I right. find that um, if we start to ask the question, what does this world need opposed to the question that I'm sure both you and I would agree is, is the, the one that it will guide you in alignment, which is again, what lights you up, um, mm -hmm. rather than thinking in terms of what the world needs, think in terms of what you want. Um, but again, yeah, I think questions like those can, can be challenging to, to answer. And even if you were able to answer, I, um, I feel like, where it leads you might be a place that still still has that that 
feeling of of something missing but if you start to think in terms of the experience that not only that you want to have but the experience that you wish to see in others um mm -hmm. i love that so is yeah. this uh is this the the main thing that you've been focusing on this uh yeah, it's been it's really come in really strong, um, you know, just in my just in my knowingness and beingness lately. And, it, and it's so simple. And I'm and honestly, like we could talk about it here and we are talking, you know, we are talking about it a little bit, but they're like to actually take someone through this process because people will will usually go through through it in their head. Like I want people to, you know, and we have to filter it down and down and down and and really get to the heart of it right? It's not because people will want it to sound good. Oh, I want my calling to be something like this or this or people experiencing joy or happiness, and which are all good and maybe you're calling, right? But like I had a client the other day and she was, um, you know, she was going through, okay, yeah, I want people to experience love and my child and all these things. And about an hour and finally she was just like, I just want people to experience their sparkle, you know, <laughs> and and she just lit up and I'm like, that's it. That Like, it doesn't have to make sense to your mind. Like the calling doesn't even have to be a word necessarily, you know? So, so I just want to, you know, iterate that this process is, and I encourage you to, to go and, and do it on your own and see what comes up for you. And, you know, but, but you're right. It's not, um, it, we came to this planet to serve others. Like that's, that's what lights us up like if you think of of when you've been the most fulfilled in your whole life like think of a few moments i guarantee you it's when you were in service to another being and you weren't thinking about yourself at all mm -hmm. right that doesn't mean it's martyrdom that doesn't mean we martyr ourselves and we don't take care of ourselves as well um but so that's why the calling is focused on service to others because that's why we're freaking here together you know so but it's a state it's a state of being like when I say my calling is people experiencing their infinite nature and I think about not even think about that I feel into that it is a state change it's not in my mind it's not in my head it doesn't like make me go you know it's like first it's here and then any action comes from that so it's subtle it can be very subtle and it takes it's like a practice it's like mastering something like when you want to master something, you go to school for it or you practice basketball all day or whatever. This is, this is not different than that. So while it's super simple in concept, the, it takes effort, but it doesn't take any more effort than micromanaging your life with your mind and being miserable. <laughs> so which choice, where, where would you rather direct your effort? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how do you, um, how have you implemented that, that phrase into your life? Mm. So the, the question is, the question is always, where am I coming from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's, this, it's the same. Am I coming from my calling or am I coming from my head where I think I want to get, where I think there's some external happiness waiting for me, um, some future goal. So there's no, when you really live the calling, when you really fully embody it and live it, there is no future. There is no plan. There is no path. Because you are led down it so effortlessly from living from this place, not living to somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, go ahead. I was going to say, I like that it's a, it's not a, a task or a mission. It's a state of being. Mm -hmm. And if you make it that, if you make your calling a state of being, then one, it takes the pressure off, I think. Yep. which what I think um, I was talking to some of the senders yesterday about this. I know some of you guys are with us here in the live stream. So you guys, uh, I think we were all on the same page that um, we we can, especially those of us that, that are pursuing growth and that are conscious, we can definitely have this way of putting a ton of pressure on ourselves to be a certain person to accomplish certain things um, because we have taken it upon as a responsibility to to guide others and to uplift others and I, I see there's two sides to that there's the side of you know it's it's great to want to step up as a leader and and take on that role but then the the thing that we were discussing was in what ways is putting this pressure on me myself not serving me and how is that actually holding me back mm -hmm. 
So yeah. I, I definitely think that, um, again, approaching this as, as a moment to moment thing, a now thing, can I, can I, where am I coming from in the now opposed to who do I need to be or what do I need to do to accomplish all those things that I've set out to? It will, uh, it'll take off the pressure, make it a little bit more fun and interesting and bring you back into that place that you wish to be in. Yeah. And the only question that you really ever have to ask yourself is, is this in alignment with my calling? <laughs> There's no more decisions to be made. There's no more, well, maybe a decision of this is more in alignment. These are both in alignment, but this is more in alignment, you know? Mm -hmm. And like you was talked about earlier, um, it's, so it doesn't become anymore, like, even though it's about ser completely about serving others, it's not about asking, okay, what do I see in the world that people need that I can't, the world needs everything. So you, that would be a silly question to ask, what does the world need? They need everything, right? So when you're connected with your calling, which is source, right, your like expression of source through you is your calling. Um, that's what the world needs more than anything else. Right. So you never have to worry about that. You never have to worry. Am I in service? You just have to go, oh, am I in alignment with my calling? Am I in alignment with the reason that I exist? That's it. That's it's as simple as that. You are here. You exist for this reason alone. And it can look a million different ways. It doesn't matter what it looks like. And it doesn't matter what if it makes sense to you or anybody else. That's irrelevant. Nice. So it, it becomes simple. <laughs> yeah. If you simplify it to that, it can, uh, if I feel like, actually, that's, uh, I, I'm glad that you, you bring up the word simple because it's something I've been, uh, I've been circling around for the last, especially the last few days. Um, yeah. And coming back to, to putting pressure on ourselves and whatnot. Um, I think it, uh, it's a, a common tendency to want to wanna overcomplicate things. Um, and I guess I've seen it myself, I've seen it in others. It's, uh, why do you think we, um, we do that? Like why, we all, we all look at simple and, and can agree that simple is nice simple simple feels <laughs> feels peaceful simple is yeah. free where does yeah. the um especially again in the context of um a purpose right yeah because yeah. even that word like it can be a heavy word if yeah you're approaching it with this sort of mentality that there's something that i'm meant to do or that needs to be done mm-hmm how do yeah. we simplify things? Why don't we simplify things? Yeah. Well, the easy answer to why we don't is, um, well, we chose to come in this beautiful, you know, incarnation of being a crazy ass human. But, um, but the, what comes with that is our conditioning, which is uh, the, the like core of our conditioning is lack is fear is I am not good enough. Whatever I'm doing right now isn't good enough. There must be something else that I should be doing more or better. It's not enough. Like just being who I am is not enough. That's why we complicate it because we don't believe, we don't trust ourselves. We don't trust God or source or the universe. We say we do in our minds, but we really don't. Because if you really did, you wouldn't be thinking about those things. And that's not a judgment because we all do it, right? It's part of human nature. But it's asking yourself, how much do I... Do I actually really trust, you know? So then it's cultivating and nourishing and nurturing that space, that trust of who and what you are, of all that is, of the light, of the love, of you as that in the world. And that's a practice. Mm -hmm. It's learning to, to trust. And um, actually one of the, the words that I had in mind coming into this conversation, and it's a perfect segue to it, is surrender mm, yes what does that mean to you sweet sweet surrender <laughs> it's uh just accepting whatever's arising in the moment right so accepting whatever's whatever appearance is appearing in the illusion or the matrix that you've created by the way we know this right or accepting a thought or an emotion um accepting it surrendering to it loving it but knowing it's not you and it's not who you are, it's, it's like loving it like a child and surrendering to it like a child, you know, like the child within. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, um, 
there's this very funky kind of balance that needs to happen. I can't believe I just used the word funky. That's the problem yes. with going live, folks. I love it. There's no editing that out. Um, What's wrong with funky? I like that. I, I kind of like funky. We're going to get funky. <laughs> okay. Um, get funky. I find it very funky to try to balance the what may feel like contrasting energies of surrendering and allowing and trusting with creating consciously mm -hmm. creating mm -hmm. yes. and again yes. I, I have to bring it back to what i've been experiencing these last few days because i've been all over the place i've been feeling funky guys i'll admit it yeah, yeah. um and the reason being not knowing which I, I feel like it was the the feeling like it had to be an either or kind of thing like mm -hmm. one of it was right and one of it was wrong in truth i know that it's never that simple um but it was this trying to to figure out where i needed to be is it a just allow trust and be or is it a more consciously create do this is this is up to me to choose and this actually comes back to the conversation of callings and purpose because the what it was that i was considering was is coming into alignment with are we coming into alignment with a path that we will feel most fulfilled in following or are we choosing the path that we wish to move into you see you see the difference between the two there it's the is there a path that i'm i should be aligning with like you and i we can say yeah we know what direction should we how we should follow the direction or where we should find that guidance it's always in inner guidance but i guess what i'm getting at is are we aligning with a path or are we creating the path? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's one of these things that, that you're doing. And I totally get it that we do in our mind. And we try to complicate things, you know, like, like, there's a, like there's a difference in those two things. There's not really, or at least I don't see that there's a difference. Like we try to separate it, just like we try to separate the doing and the being, right? We, try, we think that they're, I mean, and they are very different in the way that they look, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but yeah, like, are we aligning with what's already there, right? Is what you're asking? Or are we like forging something and creating something new in the, I mean, it's both. We're doing both all the time, right? From the place of alignment, we then create. And, and I think it's, again, it's about trusting ourselves, trusting that um, because we have this conditioning, Brian, and I, I have it, you know, big time too. And I'm still, there's still moments where I'm like, oh, I should be doing more. I should be doing something else. I, I can, I have this gift, you know, I need to be out there in the world and just pumping at, you know, hustling in some ways, like this do, do, do like conditioning. That's just in our nervous system. That really has to just, you have to white, we just have to say, it's okay. Like you don't have to do that. You don't have to try to be worthy to exist and to be loved. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what came through right now. No, for, I like it. What, I think, yeah. again, it's, it's, it's bringing it together and recognizing it's ultimately just one. Right. And I think that's actually yeah. part of this, this, um, this physical experience of, you know, bringing those, what may, we may think of as opposing different, um, types of energy, but, bringing it together and and finding that 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 intersection point between the two and it's not something that you can you can really grasp at with your mind because the yeah. mind will say that those are two completely different things yeah. but yeah. if we um if we we let go of the, um, the internal dialogue around this and we we find it in in our our state of being then I think that's when when things really start to take off because I think it's when we find that sweet spot between the two and the balance between the two. I think this actually um, 
pertains to the the conversation of ba balancing the, the divine masculine and divine feminine um but yeah again it's when we when we can balance the the being the the feeling and the the stillness with that that active creation and doing um i feel like we we are most powerful in in that sort of state and again as this as this uh pertains to carrying out our calling carrying out our purpose now what about the um the so going back to that uh that phrase that calling that um you you identify right mm -hmm. um the other thing that i wanted you to to speak to a little bit more about is this isn't just the vocation that you you carry out this is not just your your line of work this is this is going to apply to all areas of your life you mentioned that that's a calling that you don't just come back to when you're talking about serving others in the work that you do you bring this into to all areas of your life right yeah, it's yeah, it's literally who you are. It's literally why you're here, the energy signature you are meant to be in the world. So of course it's it's encompasses every aspect of your life down to, you know, every interaction you have. Every time even when you're alone in your house just sitting around. You know, whatever it is, you can always you can practice your calling in jail. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, where you are, what you're doing. It's just who you are. So it's effortless. It's easy once you refocus yourself back again and again. And yeah, you're right. It's not about just, I mean, it, it expresses in the work that you do, and but it expresses in the conversations you have with your partner. You know, it expresses when you eat your food. It's everything. Mm -hmm. So I noticed a, a question here from the the live audience. I said last time that yeah. I, I wouldn't be picking up questions during. I do think uh, for those of you that are still with us, uh, towards the end of the, the conversation, we'll, uh, we'll leave some space for you guys to drop in with any questions or comments. But I did catch the question here, so I'm going to bring it up. Um, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure what he means. Maybe, Tara, you can, uh, you can interpret. Greg says, what is the most universal law you follow? Oh, is that for me? Yeah, it was for you. Most you said law. you follow the most, Tara. Okay. I, I'm not sure exactly what he means. Do you uh, do you have an interpretation yeah. for that? Um, here's what I'll say: is I would say the most universal law I would follow is the law of one, which is Ra Ra's law of one, which is in the law of one books um, that were channeled through, you know, Carla and this was in the 80s or something, but Ra is a social memory complex that's in the sixth density. And, um, they are completely balanced in love and wisdom. And, you know, so they're able to see the perspective, like the, like the laws of the universe, not just the laws of the earth and the humans and da, 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 da. It's freaking the laws of, of everything, <laughs> of all the universes, you know? So, um, yeah, that feels the most true to me, the most resonant to me, um, that we are one. And not just that, though, but that there's, um, yeah, there's, de there's levels of densities, which I know, Brian, we've talked about before a little bit, you know, which some people call them dimensions. Some people interchange those. Um, but it goes up to seventh, and then eighth is a different octave. Again, eighth goes into the absolute, and then it reincarnates into the first, you know, so on and so forth. So, I would say that would be the most universal law. I don't know if that helps if that answered Greg's question. I I think it did. I uh, <gasps> okay. I, I sense that I did, but he'll still be around in the comments if uh, if, if he has yeah, more yeah. to ask about. Um, yeah. So ultimately, oneness, right? Uh, or does it differ? Yeah, I mean that's a part. That's a part of it. That's a very that's fourth density is is oneness, and huh. it's this thing that you know it's so interesting that. Um, that people are, and this is totally semantics and I, you know, whatever, I don't even really care that much about it, but people like we're in third density now as, as a, as a human, most mainstream human collective consciousness is in third density. Right. And there's so much talk about going to 5d, 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 5d. Well, I get that, but it's skipping over 40. 40 is the love and the compassion and the understanding. 50 is wisdom, which is beautiful. 
Um, but you have to first have the love and the compassion and all of that before you can go to 5D. So we can't just go to 5D. We have to go to 4 as a species. We have to go to 4D first. And again, it doesn't matter. It's just words and all of that. Um, but then 60 is the is the where love and wisdom are fully fully balanced. So let me just give you an example of love and wisdom, so you you can understand. Like if you were to ask me a question and I were to say, "Oh Brian, thank you so much. You know I really don't understand your question, but you know I love you and it's okay." Da, 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 right? I'm just being super like lovey and and all of that, which is great. Fifth, like if I'm fully in wisdom and it's not balanced with love. I would just be like, I don't get, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, next. You know what I mean? Like it would be truthful. It would be clear, but it wouldn't encompass both love and wisdom. So love and wisdom response would be, oh, thank you so much for your question. I really appreciate it. Can you restate it? Because I don't understand what you're asking me. Very simple example. But it's how people in, in, who, are, who are so in fourth density, like so much of our, our people here are, consciousness, um, so many people are already there that they are the martyrs and they they are activists and they want to save the world and they want to go and they want to rescue the children from the thing and the and i'm not saying we don't go and we help people but you don't know if that's the best highest thing for them you don't know you're not about it's not balanced with wisdom like what is the larger perspective right so I don't even know what your question was. I just know I, it, doesn't it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. You know how our conversations go. I, I, know, I, I, know. <laughs> I think the uh, it may, perhaps it might get a little bit uh, um, all over the place for the audience, but yeah. uh, you and I, okay. we're... We can rein it back. I, if we can figure out... No, there's no bringing it back. Flow only moves in one direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, true, true. That's, okay. actually, that's actually the kind of conversation that I enjoy most. I want to bring that yeah. it back to what you just said, but I, I just throwing it out, I'm just throwing it out there that I like the, uh, the flowy kind of like hop around different topics. Again, I get how it can, it can be a little bit all over the place, but um, <laughs> personally, and maybe, maybe the listeners can chime in if, uh, if they don't necessarily like this approach. But what I like to do is uh, just have a conversation with the individual with me and um, let the audience be there part of the conversation now before they were kind of a fly on the wall now they can even get involved with the live stream but uh yeah. yeah i'm just throwing out there that i like that flow let's see where it goes kind of thing and i think there's larger implications to that um we can get to that but i do want to come back to the law of one uh yeah. so you said love and wisdom is the uh the 5d correct or six um that's the that's together 60 is the beautiful combination of love and wisdom and it's there's so much more to it than that this is the very the most simplistic thing i could say about it but yeah so 60 is bringing fourth and fifth together love and wisdom in a balanced the entity is very balanced in that way mm -hmm. yeah it's and then in 60. and then 40 what's the what's the experience like there uh, 40s. Well, most of us, so many of us are already in for, or so many people, you know, have already um, are already in 4D. That's why 3D is having such a hard time because it's it's not truth anymore. Um, but 4D is that 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 really that seeing we are all one. You know, the love, the light, the embodiment of um, that compassion that there's no more judging, you know, it's just, we're all accepting of each other and we love each other and everything is good. It's like just a utopia, you know, mm -hmm. but again, it doesn't have that wisdom yet. So it can be image. It's still, it's still an immature, you know, spiritually speaking, an immature place in some ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you've, uh, you've ever heard it put like this before, but I, I do recall actually a couple individuals saying it, um, saying that 4d is kind of, the bridge between the 3D and 5D because I've always actually found that uh, I've always been curious about that that mm -hmm. there's a lot of talk about being a 3D planet and ascending to the 5D why yeah. why don't we why does the the 4D get left out of the conversation and I think again one of the interpretations yeah. was it was it's it's a bridge it's not somewhere that you stay there too long it's it's more of a transitionary period have you ever heard anything like that before 
Yeah, I, th- I mean, no, it, but it's, you know, it's possible and different. I'm the, so what I'm referencing is the law of one. Mm-hmm. So you have to go through these. You can't really, like, if you haven't been to 6D before, you know, as, a, as an entity, then you do have to go through the other levels first. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the evolution of our, of our soul, of our beingness is going through. Um, and I don't know, maybe there's different rules or something for, you know, I, who knows? It's a mystery. Like, I, I can't say I know that. Mm-hmm. But, um, but as it's laid out, you know, from a 60 social memory complex, you know, there is the ascension. The ascension does go through those phases. You know, you can't skip anything unless you've already, you came here as a 60 density, a six density being. And then, yeah, I think it's probably a lot easier for you to just go to 60. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the love yeah. one, does it, uh, does it involve talk at all about our, um, our journey of ascension specifically, or is it just more general? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. No, no, it does. It talks about, um, the journey of humanity through, yeah. Through so these. what comes up with that? Um, I mean, as much as I've read, which isn't the complete works, there's several books. Um, a lot of what I'm talking about, I've read in the books, but I've also learned from Ventino, who's my, you know, one of my teachers. So, um, yeah, it just talks about that. Basically, it says we've already been in 4D for a while. We just don't know it. <laughs> so that's why it's like, mm-hmm. which could be why some of the, because the 5D consciousnesses, entities that are being channeled through, right, saying, oh, we need to ascend to 5D, you know, it could be that we, since we've already been in 4D for a while, maybe that's what they're talking about. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, But you have to, you have to know where, like where, whatever channel message is coming through, it's important to know where that's coming from and what density or dimension or whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? Like, like even, and this is going to be super controversial for a lot of people when I say this, and I don't mean any, you know, disrespect to anybody, but if we look at like our ascended masters, like Jesus, for example, right? He came in and his whole message was love, right? That was Jesus's message above anything else. It was love. So Jesus came from a fourth density, um, wherever he came from, it's fourth density, right? So he had a lot. He, of course, there was a beautiful message to share, but you have to look at where he's coming. He was coming from too at the time. So Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's higher densities than that. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, I don't no. think anybody listening here is going to really care, but you know, you never know. It's, it's fun to, uh, to ponder. I think that's mm-hmm. it, right. It's, um, yeah. I think just, um, just throwing it out there. It's, uh, when we, when we think about these things, it's, I think it's important that we don't get attached to right. knowing, anyway. Um, and I've, I've been there, so I know what it's like wanting to know, wanting to have the answer, but yeah. let's be real. Like the, 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 ter- the phrase that I always come back to is the only certainty is uncertainty and yeah. we have to be willing to accept that. So I do yeah. think it's, uh, it can be a fun experience to, to think about, to consider these things, but I think we are getting away a little bit from yeah. the, uh, the previous point we made and it was, you know, keep it simple. It should yes. really be simple. Yes. And, um, yes. like you, like you mentioned, well, I'm not even gonna bring it back to that, but if we, we do have to simplify it or if we do choose to simplify it, most teachers, most teachings religions are all pointing to the the same thing right um yeah it it always does come back to gratitude love acceptance um you know there's one thing that um that i uh i have a personal interest in diving into and it's um when we simplify these things to you know just being in the state of of acceptance and and gratitude um even in even in perceiving of oneness and connecting to the the truth that it's all you you're everything you're the universe right Mm -hmm. um Again, I know I know where this is going to go. It's going to come back to don't try to grasp it with your mind. But I know a few people 
who have talked to me about being in this sort of place and again i've been there as well connecting to that and trying to interpret it can actually lead into this feeling of meaninglessness Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. have you ever uh have Mm -hmm. you ever experienced that for yourself and Mm -hmm. what uh Mm -hmm. what do you have for anyone that has connected to this place of this is all me i'm the creator of my reality but with that starting to to fall into this feeling that well what's it really all for then Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah totally and it's this phase that many who awaken go through this like this nihilistic sort of you know Nietzsche nothing means anything we might as well just all die you know like I definitely have yeah have experienced that as well um and so what this so because when you do awaken to the remembrance that we're in a dream right an illusion the matrix if you will that we're all creating and none of it's really real although very relevant we can forget that it's relevant and so what what's missing in this um viewpoint is the direct experience that you are god that everything is god yes it's all an illusion that we've created you know yes absolutely we're in the matrix, whatever. It's even the stuff we were talking about before, densities and law of one, all of it. None of it is, none of it means anything really, right? It's all just what we create. But the basis, the foundation, the substratum of all of that is, is God, is this light, this beautiful light and this beautiful just knowingness that you can come home to at any time that is rich and full and empty at the same time. And it's if you, if you're having this view of nothing means anything, then it's like, then you don't, then it's all in your head, right? Then there's no direct experience of God of, in any way of coming into your heart and being like, oh yeah, there's the love, right? there's the light that's always there that I am. And so the only way I found to, you know, sort of walk through and move through this is to give yourself that direct experience again and again and again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, um, it's important that we connect to our experience through in in the state of presence, but at the same time cultivate that that sense of self love and and gratitude, right? And I think that that place that I was describing before, where where there's that that empty feeling and that being a a discomfort uncomfortable experience is when we come into a place of maybe mindfulness right a still mind even but aren't connecting to our experience with with gratitude and with love um the other thing that comes through in my mind right now is that oneness doesn't mean being alone it's being unified and Mm -hmm. i think if we we try to interpret oneness then it can mean it can it can lead into feeling like if all is one and all is me then i'm alone Uh uh-huh and that can be a scary thing but if you say you know oneness isn't being alone oneness is being connected to mm-hmm. all that is i think that can yeah. be a little bit um well definitely would be a more pleasant experience yes yes and <laughs> another like a like a step after that right if you're like okay yeah we're all one we're all unified yes all of that is totally great um but then when you can know that sh- it is all one, right? It is all the one infinite creator, everything here, all of us, all of it. It's just one. There's no duality. There's no light and dark. There's nothing. It's just one. And that is ultimately essentially who you are. And that can, that can be very scary. Absolutely. It can be scary, but can you fall in love with that? Can you fall in love with knowing that, Oh my God, all of this is the one infinite creator. And like, Holy shit. That's, that's just, you know, if you can fall in love with even that and be like, yeah, okay, I feel alone right now or loneliness in that. Um, but instead of run away from it, can you go inward with it and go, it's still all, it's still, it's still all okay. It's the one infinite creator. There's nothing wrong here. There's nothing wrong with feeling 
alone or loneliness or any of that stuff. You know, that's just another next step kind of. Yeah, that's that's such an important point that you bring up that um, it's about it's be be with that experience, be with that feeling. Yeah. All right. Rather than try to to fight it, I think being with it is um, is the the even that I was going to say is the way in which we move through it. But then again, that comes back to the intention of wanting to to get through it get rather it. than yeah. just yeah. be with it. So yeah. that's an interesting thing that uh, that you mentioned there, and such an such an important thing. Um, there was one thing that um, oh right with uh with that now i want to i want to still kind of bring it back to um the 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 topic of purpose now if i am creating all of it if this is me creating all of it then does my purpose matter is it important right how do mm-hmm. we how do we find a sense of connection and and thrill in our purpose from this place of you know i am creating it from the ground up mm-hmm. well we trust we trust in creation right that we are here for a reason that our unique energy signature decided and chose to come here for a reason and it's relative. So it's relatively true. It's relatively important. It totally depends on where you're looking at it from. If I'm looking, pulling back and looking at it from the God state or the absolute state, of course, it's not important. Of course, it doesn't matter, right? That can take some of the pressure off though, too, and be like, ultimately, everything is fine. That's the wisdom. That's the wisdom is saying everything is fine, no matter what happens, because we know that's true. Whether you fulfill or live your purpose or not, but if we're, we look at it from that perspective of 40, of, of love and compassion and all of that, we did come here for a reason. And yeah, it's relatively true, but it's still true here. So, you know, we can choose where we're looking at, where mm. we're looking at it from. And, and we have to be comfortable with different paradoxical things being simultaneously true. I mean, that's the definition of paradox. You know, it's not one or the other. It's not. It never could be. It's in, in creation. There is duality. And that's, you know that we can't get away from that. So we just have to throw our hands up and go there out. It's all true. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that. That's actually, it's really uh, cool to, to conceptualize that you're kind of shifting. It doesn't even necessarily be shi- uh, have to be shifting, but what came up on you when you said it is like, you can shift through those different points of perception and, and kind of embrace the ones and pull in the ones that, that in that moment is of greatest service to, to you and, how you wish to feel, right? So the most in alignment, yeah. I love that because yeah. it, it actually speaks to exactly what I was trying to get at, and it's if from that highest point of perce- perspective, it's it's all good. None yeah. of it, none of this really matters, right? It's then right. in connecting to that, we can we can start to feel like, well, then what am I here for? Does my purpose matter? And I'll just share kind of my personal experience with it is I've been in the place of being invigorated by my purpose and thinking that it was this important mission and task that or this important mission that, that I was on and purpose that I had to serve because, you know, again, it, I, I was invigorated by the feeling of it being important and meaningful. Right. But then as time went on and I started to to see more and more that that meaning is is created. Right. It, it may be meaningful, but it may have felt meaningful. But I was the one that decided it was meaningful. I put mm-hmm. meaning to it. Right. And mm-hmm. again, coming into that experience of um, of seeing that that truth that on that one plane that, you know, all of it is good and always will be good regardless of what happens here. Um, it, it had this way of, of making me feel a little less thrilled about the the mission, about the purpose. And that didn't feel so good because it, it feels good to to be excited about service and, and, you know, setting a goal and working towards it. 
Um, so I think it's um, that that important, um, a very important realization that on, on different planes of thought, it's all true. And from one perspective, yeah, it's all good. And it, it doesn't matter how this pans out. It's still going to be all good. Um, but from another perspective, we should put meaning to, to our lives and our purpose. We should make it important. This should matter. And it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it doesn't should, it doesn't no should, you know, it doesn't have to, but yeah, we're here. We might as well. We if might as well good. do what we're here to do. Yeah. We might as well do what we're here to do. Have some fun, help some freaking people. I mean, I know I'm making light of it, but we need to make light of it sometimes to be, to go from the place of none of it really matters. We're all God. You know, we're all beyond God. We're all before God to, yeah, well, we might as well just do some cool shit and good shit while we're here. I love it. Because why not? Why not? <laughs> so today we got a special guest on Awaken, Sylvester. Sylvester. Oh, buddy. Yeah. He needs, he needs a moment of meditation as well. <laughs> you know, actually, let's talk about dogs for a moment. <laughs> We can okay. learn so much from dogs. I have this conversation all the time. <laughs> there is yes. so much to be learned from dogs. Oh, yes. Let's talk about that. The state of being that, that a dog. That we... <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think is, is happening from, from, the, from the perceiver of a dog? Hmm. You mean, a, well, a dog is, doesn't have, you know, doesn't have like self-awareness. So it takes away so much of their perceived choice. And, you know, they're just, they just are that they are a dog, but they don't have any awareness that they're a dog. Mm -hmm. You know, like, because we're aware, we think we're aware that we're a person, it creates a lot of suffering. Because then we have this a whole identity we pasted on ourselves that we feel like we have to maintain and be and become and be better you know all these things where a dog is just like i'm just you know here and i'm cool <laughs> like there's he doesn't he doesn't perceive himself to be a dog you know i'm gonna put him down okay hold on buddy there you go does that make sense yeah it does um but then we say that we know we're a person. We're aware that we're a person, uh -huh. but right, we think not, we're yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Is that not just a constructed idea itself? Yeah, totally. It's just a thought. It's just a thought, but we believe it, and collectively, you know, there's a collective conscious um, consciousness around that that's so strong, and we believe it. Like we label everything. You know, my phone, my whatever, my hair. I mean, everything is labeled. So that's why when we can bring ourselves, when we can relax the mind and bring ourselves to the place before the thought, before we label it, before we perceive ourselves to be anything other than God and that pure awareness of what we are, that's the, that's the bliss state, right? Because mm -hmm. we're, we're not adding on all the things that we think we are. That we see and we think we are yeah right and i think that um that construction of an identity which is always and can only be less than or entail less than we truly are it yeah meaning it can only be limiting yeah that's it it can only be we're just in little limiting you know meat suits that we are <laughs> are real and yeah. it's like oh no actually that's not the truth yeah all right yeah. so i mean of course there are empowering thoughts and and those those um have their place but it's just interesting to think that yeah. any thought around who you believe yourself to be is is limiting because you are always going to be more than anything you think you are yeah with the mind yeah right all right so yeah but we can express through this, we can express source and God through this vehicle without limitation. I mean, relatively without limitation, you know, we can't fly yet. Maybe, I don't know. But you know what I mean? Like relatively, um, we're only as limited as we think we are. So 
but but there's also this this whole notion of like our higher self's journey and what's relevant for us to to experience here to learn and grow and you know for whatever reason we came here for so it's all about learning and lessons and while while yes everything is unlimited it's not relevant for me to you know be an astronaut it's not relevant for me to experience all those things when they're like you can do and be anything well sure you can but most of it isn't relevant for you so just stick to what lights you up and know that you can do it and that's it <laughs> you know it's like that's so empowerment that's that's the sole thing we need to look at to to determine what what is revel relevant what is in alignment yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, as the expression of in this being, you know, yeah, what lights you up? What uh -huh. makes you excited? Okay, so with our last, uh, I know you have about 15, 20 minutes here. Mm -hmm. um, with that, that remaining time there, uh, we, we talked about surrender. We talked about allowance. We talked about your calling. Uh, I started this uh, this stream with the title surrender to your calling mm -hmm. how do we bring those two together and how do they how do they even connect yeah what surrendering to the calling yeah cuz yeah what why why surrender in that in that context yeah um hold on sylvester it's getting riled up again <laughs> he's excited about surrendering to your calling <laughs> um so, yeah, the reason I think I, I used that title in some live videos that I did on Facebook, because people, again, people think a calling is something I have to go out and do, right? So they start from the doing, and it's very um, mind-based, right? So when we're surrendering, we're letting go of the mind, we're surrendering to the truth that we're this energetic being that we're here, right? You're surrendering. And when you surrender to the calling that you are, you're surrendering in every moment to it again and again and again. So it just keeps you out of the mind. You know, you keep surrendering to, am I coming from my calling? Like, am I coming from this place? Is it aligned with this? And so when you're in surrender, you're not thinking about what's going to happen next. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Like when you're fully in surrender, you do not care what's happening next or about the, the so-called future. And that's how you're really of service to yourself and others, you know, and that's how you'll live a fulfilled life is being surrendered to your calling here on earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It comes back to making it a, uh, a state of being in the now opposed to this is the, the task that, that, I'm I'm called to serve and um yeah I, I think it's it's how we frame it in our mind like how we frame and that's why I love the um that little practice that you you spoke to uh, at the beginning here um how do we how do we frame our calling in our mind what what does our calling mean to me and um what I'm what I think we've kind of pointed to is it's it's about that that reference point for what lights me up mm -hmm. and using that in the now mm -hmm. yeah and your calling is a super super awesome focus for that and because sometimes people go well, I don't know what lights me up a lot of things light me up you know so it can it can just really take it out of the mind and like super focus like oh yeah is it aligned okay yes or no so something that just came to me was and it, it's, this is perfect how everything has happened, but that would have been so cool for us to do, for me to work with you on your calling for this call so that you could speak, actually speak to it. <laughs> but we can still do that, you know? Tell you what, um, oh, I kind of, that does sound interesting, but there was, there was one thing that I, uh, I recall that I wanted to, to finish up with. Yeah. Um, no, you know what? Tell you what, that is the perfect reason to get you back on for another episode. <laughs> um, but we're not done just yet. There's two yeah. things that I wanted to finish up with. So senders, yeah. those of you in the live stream with me still and Tara, um, 
stick around because I do want to open it up to you guys and hear what you guys have to say because I know there was quite a bit of comments through the episode I had mentioned in the, the last episode there. Probably not going to be looking too much at the comments during the conversation through throughout, but um, I definitely want to take some time in the end here to, to see what you guys have to say and, uh, and bring it forth. But uh, before we, we open up things, I thought I would revisit a little... Um, a little thing I had going on uh, in some of the early ep- earlier episodes of the show. I feel like I want to bring this back up. It's the ascending round. Tara, you going to join me for this ah, one? I'm going to join you, buddy. Let's do it. I don't think we did this <laughs> the, the first time we, we... I don't think so. No, okay, cool. Uh, the ascending round is just a couple of quick fire questions um, to bring to our listeners some short, actionable tidbits of advice. Ready for the first one? Yep. I want to know one to three books that has had the greatest positive influence on your life. Um, yes. Books. Yep. Uh, Busting Loose from the Money Game by Robert Scheinfeld. It's probably one of the main ones. Um, I mean, just going back to real old school, you know, back in the day. Like, I think my first spiritual book was The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, which still today holds. It's a great book. Um, and The Alchemist was one of my first two. Nice. Yeah. I've read The Alchemist, not the other two. I've heard of the second one, uh, The Peaceful Warrior. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna have to take a look at that. Um, next question is, what is one of the best investments that you have made under $100? Ooh, that's a Tim Ferriss question. He asked that at the end of his podcast. Yeah, yeah. I used to listen to him all the time. Best investment I made under $100 recently. Holy moly. Mm. Come back. Let's come back to that one. Okay, no problem. This one I actually stole from Tim as well. Um, That's a new one from him. What is a habit perspective or belief that you have adopted in the last five years that has had the greatest impact on your life has led to the greatest amount of change transformation Mm. habit perspective or belief what comes through Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um consistently remembering that i am none of my habits perspective or beliefs Mm. (laughs) i love it (sighs) I feel like that question just kind of imploded. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me know when you're ready to come back to the purchase. Actually, are you? Okay. Because no, the, I, like nothing is coming. Isn't that weird? Like I just can't. It's not even in my range of. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Well, uh, yeah. I'll give you a pass for this one. Just okay, because of thank you. how great of a conversation we had. Um, oh, okay. Last one. This is perhaps my favorite question. Tara, something magical just happened. This live stream just got put in front of every single human being on this planet. They're all listening. They're all watching you. What do you have to say to them? (laughs) Oh, I love this. I got to say, I love the laugh that came out. (laughs) That's the first thing that they all heard. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Um, you are infinite. You are God. You are God. You are God. Know this. Know this, and you will never need anything else. I love that. The end. The end. <laughs> Tara, I am so glad we got the chance to do this. I want to thank you for thank you. joining me, having a little fun. Um, <sighs> you got anything for us before you take off here? Of course, leave us with uh, with some something to follow somewhere to go if uh if some of our listeners want to go check you out some more yeah sure sure um you can check me out on my website which is terrasyel.com t-a-r-a-h-c-y-e-l.com and yeah if you're interested in um exploring your calling i do have like a button there that you can sign up for that session it's kind of like a single you know explore your calling session you know if that lights you up Um, And so I work, as you know, I work like Brian, one-on-one with folks. And like we talked about on the last podcast, which has evolved a little bit, I'm actually starting a new business with two partners, and we're going to be working with um, corporations to align them to their company's true mission, not the bullshit PR mission, but the true mission, and then align their entire company from there. So we're really excited about that. 
that's I incredible know. to bring that into into corporations yes. that we're that, so excited now we're yeah. talking big change yeah yeah that exactly and we're all so three like oh my god we're so lit up by it like we're just ready and on fire to you know and it does feel exciting even though i know on another level it doesn't matter it is so freaking exciting and it's one of the reasons why i'm here so let's might as well do it i love that that's amazing i've never even i don't think i've ever heard of anyone um approaching approaching it like that a lot of us in the space are are working with people on that one-on-one um level yeah. but to to break into bringing that to to establish corporations that that yes. can be powerful and i actually think we're in a time now where there's a lot of um, there's a lot of conversation happening in large corporations to shift back the focus to yeah. what really matters. Time is ripe. Time is ripe. And I've always been like, you know, like, oh, corporations, ah, whatever. But it's like, no, no, that's where we're going to actually make the biggest impact and change because how much that trickles down from, say, Apple, for example, you know, like if we were just talking about really big corporations. Can you imagine the impact? If their whole company was aligned with, anyway, I could go on, but I won't. But thank you so much, Brian. For <laughs> I this. wish we had so time fun. too, but uh, yeah, that that seems to be your cutoff. I'm just putting it out there. I would keep going if we could. I would keep going too, but I have another appointment. So yeah. I know, I know, but yeah. as uh, as I'm sure we both know, this definitely will not be the last time. But yeah. again, Tara, it was so fun having you on. Um, thank you. Thank girl. you for your time, your presence, and your light. Mm, thank you so much, Brian, for everything you're doing. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, that is it for my conversation with Tara Long Ascenders. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, I, I know there's a lot of people out there that are still wrestling with, struggling in search of that calling, that purpose that they feel passionate and lit up, ready to serve. But um, I know, again, that... that it might not always be the easiest thing to connect to, but I think with some of the things that we brought forth in this conversation, some of the questions, some of the, the ways that both Tara and I have come to think of one's calling, I really do think and hope that this this sort of approach and these sort of um, this sort of mindset can help you connect to yours if you haven't yet already. Just again, some of the the big points that I think um, that stood out for me that I want to bring us back to is. Your calling doesn't have to be something that you push off into the future. It's not something that needs to be done. It's not something that you have to do. Make your calling something in the now. Make it a state of being. Make it about how you feel in this moment. And if you do that, if you make your calling a moment-to-moment -moment experience and you bring that into your state of being in the now, that's when we come alive in, in our experience and in that purpose so again I, I do hope that some of the things that we brought forth in this episode is able to help you connect to your calling if you haven't and perhaps even connect to it more deeply and more clearly if you have already feel a sense of purpose in your life and what it is that see even there I was gonna say what it is you do but it's not about what you do folks it's about what you're being and what you allow yourself to be and feel in this moment so and then the last thing i will ask of you guys is if you are enjoying the podcast you've been tuning in you've been enjoying it and um, it's been serving you i would absolutely appreciate it if you head over to itunes to leave us an honest review that really does support me and the the podcast the brand um and just getting out these messages getting out this content and impacting more lives so if you want to take some time out of your day too to support us you can head on over to togetherreascend.com forward slash itunes to leave us a review there other than that ascenders i do appreciate you i appreciate those of you that joined in on the live stream those of you that are catching the replay listening to this on your favorite podcast app you're appreciated as well um be sure to check out the ascenders community to find out when future episodes are going to be streamed uh, updates will always be found there. But until next time, Ascenders, keep ascending. <laughs>